in middle school math, you look at properties and you do things in mathematics and you don't necessarily know why you're doing it. You just know that you can and that you are. Now that you're a little bit older, a little bit smarter, we're going to put names on each of these things that we do and you're going to use those to explain and justify why you're doing certain things in mathematics. We're going to take a look today at five different properties of numbers, different properties of real numbers. And you're going to want to record information about each of these properties in your Explorer's Guide. In your Explorer's Guide, you'll have a section for each property. The name of the property, the description, and then there's two empty boxes. The box at the top is to write the symbolic notation, and the box at the bottom is for the example. The first property we're going to look at today is called the addition property of equality. This simply says that you can add the same amount to both sides of an equation and it's still equal. So if you take a look at the example at the bottom, if x equals 2, we can add 3 to each side. x plus 3 equals 2 plus 3 and it's still in balance. It's like adding the same amount to each side of a balance scale. In symbolic notation using just letters, we say that if a equals b, that's like this, I can add the same amount to each side, we'll call it C. So A plus C equals B plus C. So the addition property of equality is simply adding the same amount to both sides of an equation. The next property that we're going to look at is very familiar also, except this time instead of adding, we're going to subtract. It's called the subtraction property of equality and it's the property of equality because we're doing it to both sides of an equation. So take a look down here. If x equals 2, I can subtract 3 from each side of that equation. x minus 3 is the same as 2 minus 3. It's as if I had a scale and I took 3 pounds off of each side. In symbolic notation, if a equals b, we can subtract C, a third number, from each side. So A minus C is equal to B minus C. Just like down here, we subtracted 3 from each side. Here we just subtracted some random number, whatever it happened to be, that we called C. So the subtraction property of equality, you've used that a lot when you've solved equations, you're subtracting the same amount from both sides of the equation. The third property that we'll look at is the multiplication property of equality. The multiplication property of equality says that if you multiply both sides of an equation by the same amount, then what you have is still equal on each side of the equal sign. If x equals 2 and I multiply both sides by 3, I have 3x equals 6. Well, if x equals 2, 3x does equal 6. And here I just simply multiplied both sides of the equation by 3. If you want to put that in symbolic notation, if a equals b, then I can multiply both sides by whatever number I want to. We'll call that number c. And so if a equals b, then a times c equals b times c. I just multiplied both sides by the same thing. So, again, there's another example of a property that you've used for many years now that we're now putting a formal name to. The fourth property I'd like to share with you right now is the division property of equality. And just like the others, it's the property of equality because we're doing it to both sides of the equal sign and division because we're dividing. So if x equals 2 and I divide each side by 3, well, x divided by 3 is equal to 2 divided by 3. And you've done this when you've solved equations before. So if you divide one side and then you divide the other, the equation is still in balance. It's still equal. In symbolic notation, if a equals b, I can divide both sides by c. a divided by c equals b divided by c. That's called the division property of equality. So we have addition property of equality, subtraction property of equality, multiplication property of equality, 
and division property of equality. Now on the next page in the notes, there's an equation. The equation is 7x plus 3 equals 31. If you would, please pause the video here, solve that equation, and then we're going to take it one step further. We're actually, once we solve that, we'll go through together and explain why we did each step. Here in our first example, we solved the equation. We began by subtracting 3 from each side and then divided both sides by 7. We know that we can do those, and we've, we've worked with equations like that before, especially a lot in middle school. Now, what we're going to do is actually justify or explain why we were allowed to do something. For example, what allowed me to subtract 3 from both sides? In this case, the subtraction property of equality. So what I'll do is I'll write that right next to that step. Subtraction property of equality. And the subtraction property of equality got me 7x equals 28. Then I decided to divide both sides by 7. And that gave me x equals 4. Well, dividing both sides is the division property of equality. And so I was allowed to do that by the division property of equality. Notice what we're really doing is we're going from simply solving an equation, which you've done for many years, to explaining why we were allowed to do something. Those are the two properties there that allowed us to do that. Now, Let's take this one step further. On the next example, it says, given 3x plus 5 equals 20. And they want you to prove x equals 5. In other words, this is where you start. And this is where you want to end. And what we're going to do is solve the equation. We're going to write down each step as we go show all of our work, and we're going to write the name of the property that we used. Now, when we do a proof, we always start by writing down the original thing that they gave us. In this case, 3x plus 5 equals 20. And that was given. And we simply write given next to it because that's what they gave us to start with. Now, we want to get x along. First thing I'll do is subtract 5 from both sides. And when I do that, I have 3x equals 15. Now I subtracted 5 from both sides. The step that I just did here in blue is the subtraction property of equality. So I'll write out subtraction property of equality. And now, next I'll go ahead and divide everything by 3. All right, so I'm on the green step now, and I'm left with x equals 5. And I divided both sides by the same thing. And that happened to be called the division property of equality. Now, notice that what ha has happened here is this very end thing here matches exactly what I wanted to prove. All right, These things at the end need to match. When they match, you're done. And we show that we're done by writing the letters at the bottom, Q, E, D. Q, E, D. Quad erit demonstratum. It's actually Latin, and it means, and so it has been demonstrated. Q, E, D. This means, the proof is done.
And that's how we write a basic algebra proof. We're simply using the rules that we know from equation solving and naming the actual properties that we do. The next example, we have something very similar where they give us something and they want us to prove something. And we always begin by writing down the given statement. In this case, we have 5x minus 1 over 3 equals 8. And that is my given statement. They gave me that to start with. Now, on the left-hand side, everything is divided by 3. So I can multiply both sides by 3 over 1, which gives me 5x minus 1. 8 times 3 is 24. So 5x minus 1 is 24. I got that by multiplying both sides by something. That's the multiplication property of the quality. Multiplication property of equality. And now I'll go ahead and continue along solving this because I want to get to x equals 5. I'll add 1 to both sides. Notice I'm writing out every step almost like I'm creating an answer key or an answer manual to something. I added 1 to both sides. That's the addition property of equality. The addition property of equality. And finally, I'm left with 5x equals 25. I'll simply divide both sides by 5. And I'm left with x equals 5. Now, when I, multiply, when I divide both sides by 5, that's the division property of equality. Now I'll write that out here. And now what I ended up with exactly matches what I wanted to prove. That means I'm all done. I've demonstrated what I wanted to demonstrate. And so I'll end my proof with the letters QED. Here's one more property for you, and this is actually everyone's favorite property. It's the distributive property. You've seen the distributive property before. If you have A and then on the inside you have B plus C, you simply multiply both things inside by that A. So this is A times B, A times C. So I have A times B plus A times C. If you want to put it in terms of something that's more familiar to you, suppose you have three and then inside the parentheses an x minus y. We distribute to get 3x minus 3y. That's the distributive property. Now notice, it is not the distributive property of equality. The distributive property does not require us to do the same thing to both sides. So the distributive property, because it's only on one side of an, ex an equation or in an expression, we do not use the term of equality. Of equality is only when you're doing something on both sides of an equation. Let's take a look at a little algebraic proof that uses the distributive property. An example here using the distributive property, we're going to begin by distributing that 3. So we have what we started with, 3x plus 2 equals 12. That was our given. And we always begin by jotting down what we start with. And the first thing I'll do here is I can use the distributive property. 3x plus 6 is equal to 12. And I'll write down what I did there. Distributive property. And now I'll just go through like I've done before. 
subtract 6 from both sides. So I have 3x equals 6. And that was the subtraction property of equality. And let's see, it looks like next I need to divide both sides by 3, just like we do when we solve any old equation. I know I can divide both sides by the division property of equality. And it looks like I have exactly what I want now. It looks like I want to end with x equals 2. That's what I want to prove. And it looks like here I have x equals 2. So it looks like I've done exactly what I want to do. And when I'm done, I end my proof with simply Q, E, D. Quad erit demonstratum. Once again, that means, and such it has been demonstrated. Our proof is done. Proofs don't always have to involve just numbers. Sometimes there's variables and letters involved in them. Example 4 is a great example of that. Notice here there's not a single number. There's just a whole bunch of letters. This is hardcore algebra. But we'll do the same thing we always did. We'll just pretend they were numbers. We're given A plus C over B equals W. That's what we were given. And we write that down just like we would if they were all numbers. And I notice by looking at what I want to prove, I want to get A alone. That's what I want to do. A needs to be alone. So I'm going to work to get A alone on one side of the equation. Now, I can multiply both sides here by B because the left-hand side is all divided by B. That gives me A plus C equals B times W. That was the multiplication property of equality. So I'll write that down. And last but not least, I can subtract C from both sides. And I'm left with A equals BW minus C. I subtracted, so that's the subtraction property. Of equality. And it looks to me like this, what I have at the end, is exactly what I wanted to prove. A equals BW minus C. And so therefore, I must be done. And so I end my proof, Q, E, D. Quad erit demonstratum, my proof is completed, all my work is done. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how you go about using the properties of real numbers to explain your algebra in a, in a proof-like method. A proof is really nothing more than showing all of your work and explaining why you did each step. In middle school, you would say, well, I subtracted 3 from both sides. I divided both sides by 2. That's exactly what you did. Now we're just giving it the mathematical name. Well, we subtracted 2 from both sides because of the subtraction property of equality. We divided both sides by 20 because of the division property of equality. We're just putting the fancy names onto it. That's everything you need to know about the basics of the properties of equality and basic proof writing.